Lucas Kohut. Okay, go ahead. Two minutes. I will speak in Polish. 501 milionów euro, albo inaczej 2 miliardy 345 milionów złotych. To rachunek pisowców za wojny z Brukselą o sądy, który zapłacili wszyscy mieszkańcy Polski. To oni, mieszkańcy, cierpią także, bo za sprawą władzy KPO nie dociera do kraju. Ci sami obywatele ciężko płacą za decyzję władzy i jednocześnie są przeciwni deformom Ziobry. Prawie 90%. Szanowny panie komisarzu, ochrona praworządności to jedno, ale także ochrona interesów mieszkańców powinna być priorytetem. Pół roku temu na tej komisji apelowałem do pana o pilne prace nad mechanizmem przekazywania funduszy bezpośrednio do samorządów i organizacji pozarządowych. Odpowiedział pan wtedy, że pańscy koledzy i koleżanki zajmują się tym, aby sprawdzić, czy jest to możliwe. I chciałbym zapytać, co od tego czasu zrobiliście w tej sprawie, jak wygląda stan gry, bo tam po, po prawej stronie populista Jaki, który gra na nosie całej Unii Europejskiej, ma w nosie, czy Polacy dostaną pieniądze z Brukseli, czy nie. A od nas, od Unii, ludzie oczekują elastyczności i sprawczości. Dziękuję bardzo. So, to thanks for, for the remark about the possible funding of uh, different policies through the regional or local authorities, but uh, it's a very large uh, problem because it's not just in the situation that we have in Poland now that uh, we have such a kind of discussion. You know that uh, what we have as a legal framework at the European level is the um, obligation to work with the national authorities, with the states. And so I confirm that I have explained to some colleagues the difficulties for some municipalities and, and regions, and there are colleagues very aware about that. If you ask to my colleague Elisa Ferreira, she will explain that she received a lot of complaints about that, but there is a legal framework about the way to work. So we try to find some solution, but it's not easy. I want to add that because we are speaking here about uh, the recovery uh, and residence plan. We are speaking about the uh, fine decided by the Court of Justice, but you know that there is also uh, a blockage due to uh, the uh, horizontal enabling conditions concerning certainly the cohesion funds and other kind of funding. And there, again, there is a lack of uh, uh, implementation of uh, the different conditions. First, again, the judicial milestones, but certainly also uh, the full respect for the Charter of Fundamental Rights. So I fully understand that when you have a blockage in the funding due to a lack of uh, respect for the rule of law in one member state, there are some consequences. We try to avoid that. Uh, we have had such a discussion about the conditionality mechanism, where it's possible to protect the final beneficiaries. But at the end, of course, if you stop to fund different policies in one member state, you have a problem with uh, also some local or regional authorities. But be sure that we are aware about the situation. But till now, it's not directly my, my responsibility to, to do that, but I have discussed with some colleagues. Till now, we didn't find a real solution due to the legal framework that we have in front of us.